Will Dupree here in the KXAN live studio as we are about to carry a press conference with Chief Brian Manley and some other Austin police officers and the group called Just America. Let's take a listen. Address the public on some of the changes that uh, we have decided to make collectively together uh, to make sure that the public understands that Austin Police Department does stand in solidarity with them. Um, and, their, uh, and the issues of uh, police brutality that happen across America. So the first thing I'd like to address um, is everyone up here just for you all's record. My name is Eric Brown. Uh, I am the co-president of Just America, spelling as E-R-I-C-B-R-O-W-N. Um, to my left, we have Michael Burnett. He is also co-president of Just America. Again, Michael, common spelling, Burnett, B-U-R-N-E-T-T. -T. And then we have Ahmed Torre, who is our Vice President of Action. His name is A-H-M-E-D-T-O-U-R-E. -E. And you all know these individuals here, so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll worry about that. <laughs> um, so we'll get started. So every day um, across this great nation, people of color are faced with issues that plague our communities. Uh, we're told that we must lift ourselves up by the bootstraps, but the reality is that the oppressive system established has never been fully destroyed. And now is the time that we make the change. We're removing the cornerstones of racism across the United States and abroad, brick by brick. Our faces are not important. My face is not important, and every individual's face up here, part of our organization, is not important. Our message is, we abolish the system of injustice, but instead seek justice. We speak out against division, but embrace one another in unity. We no longer hurt in silence, but find sanctuary in our continual fight. We don't solve issues with issues. We seek trust within our communities. And Just America was founded on the intention of removing those racist uh, cornerstones that uphold those systemic issues, plaguing minority communities across the United States and beyond, starting with conversation, leading to action, and creating change. This group that you see here before you was not formed out of a violent protest. This group that you see here before you was formed out of peaceful protests. People who recognize that at a certain point, our voices yelling at buildings, yelling at officers, yelling at individuals who have no place uh, in the responsibility of the issues that have taken place here in America. And so we, what we've decided is that instead of, using our first, instead of using our freedom of speech to be able to just speak, we want to use our right to assemble, our right to come together, our right to organize to be able to be the change that we want to see in the world. And so speaking on that, I'll have our co-president, Michael Burnett, come up and he'll explain some of the things that we've been doing on the groundwork level uh, and provide you better insight on that. Thank you. Some of the things that we've been doing from the ground up is that we've been organizing. We've been uh, getting young voters registered. We're educating them on policies we're, ed we're, we're getting them involved in the, in the system to change it the right way. We know that you know we, all the meetings and the things that we're doing with the police so the community can be heard and we can implement these changes, but it still changes with policies as well. And there's some people in office who has to go. And so the, way we, the best way to do that is to organize. Uh, we're going to support candidates who are ready for change. And the best way to do that, we're organizing. We have websites set up. We have people, we have uh, support and backings that are willing to back us all the way to the, pool to the poll booth. So that's what we're doing to make that change. And by getting organized, uh, we're, we're doing that effectively. We have people that, who are willing to work with us to get some policies and those different things into place once we have people in place as well. But we're organizing at the voting booths because that's real, real true policies and these changes are gonna come into effect to help affect our communities, because our communities are suffering not just from brutality, but also socially, economically, educationally, and in the health system. 
So these are all some of the changes that we're working hard and voting and changing policies are going to be a part of that. And so without further ado at this time, we're going to invite uh, Chief Manley to come up and speak about the initiatives that we've been working forward uh, together. Uh, he'll come up and address those. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. First of all, thank you all for coming out and giving us an opportunity to share some of the work that's been going on behind the scenes. I think what's been going on in front of the scenes has been widely covered, obviously, uh, daily, but this is the important work that's being done now because we're going to get through the place where we're at together, in conversation, and in collaboration. And so when we were approached by actually Officer Bohannon and said that uh, he'd met these two great leaders out there in the community that were trying to affect change and trying to do it in a positive and a collaborative way and introduced us to Mike and Eric. It was an opportunity for us to talk about some of the issues that have been systemic in policing for a long time, some of the issues that we're facing here locally and nationally. I think we all recognize that this is the time for the community discussion, that although we've had discussions over the years, that the events like the murder of Mr. Floyd cannot go unnoticed and cannot be unaddressed by our profession because the acts of one reflect on all of us and on police departments across this country. So although we are a police department that has regularly collaborated with other groups in our community, community-led organizations, this is a new organization. And as was just mentioned by both Eric and Mike, born out of the peaceful protests that have been taking place in Austin where people are coming together to speak about these issues and affect change in positive ways. And so that is what is beneficial is that this is homegrown grassroots partnership between these community leaders and the Austin Police Department and that's where we're going to affect change in our community. The Austin Police Department stands ready to make changes. We recognize that there are important things that we need to be addressing and have addressed. I think we, as we look forward to the changes that we know we want to make and want to make in conjunction with community and city leaders as well, we do need to recognize that we're a department that has been collaborative in the past. We have been progressive. It's not as if these had to be brought to us, but this is a time when we need to look and do more. We have done so much in our community to work towards minimizing low-level arrests towards minimizing the impact of incarceration for those low-level nonviolent arrests we've worked to improve mental health training amongst our officers we've put crisis counselors in our communication center to try and help those that are in crisis that are in need in that critical moment we've got uh, ongoing reviews based on some recent reviews of the department uh, taking a look at the culture within the police department so there's a lot of groundwork that's already been set that will be the path forward for us as a police department and us as a community. And when we met with Just America, uh, had conversations about things that were very important to them and things that made sense. First of all, one of the things that's getting talked about a lot is the use of chokeholds. And although we have spoken regularly about the fact that the Austin Police Department has not approved or taught chokeholds uh, in decades, our policy did not explicitly exclude it. So we're taking that extra step so that the community understands where we stand on that issue, as do these grassroots and local grown organizations that are trying to affect change. Another area of interest was body-worn cameras. So many communities around the country have invested so much money in body-worn cameras, but they're only as good as their use. If they're not being used, then they're not effective. We've taken steps here as a community to work towards releasing video in critical incidents, something that we have not done before. We've always awaited the uh, grand jury's review of a case or the declination of that case by the district attorney. But as you well know, we now have a policy that says within 60 days of a critical incident, unless there is a reason that it cannot be done, we will be releasing a video of that incident that outlines what happened and what led on to that critical incident. But again, body-worn cameras are important to this. And so it was important when Justin Nurka met with us that there were appropriate sanctions for any officers that would intentionally deactivate a body-worn camera during a critical incident. And we agreed. If you are intentionally deactivating a body-worn camera during a critical incident, that is a huge problem for a community and for a department that is deserving of 
the, the highest of sanctions. And it's, in our discipline matrix, it does call for the indefinite suspension. And we support that. And we would also look that if there was an indication that there was any criminality in their intent when they did that, that it would be reviewed by the district attorney's office as well as they partner with us in all of those investigations. A third area of interest that was brought up as we discussed uh, with Just America was having our mayor and council more involved in um, the, the policy push out of the police department, specifically when we make changes to the policies, ensuring that our mayor and council as the elected officials of the city are the ones to ensure they're communicating with their constituency as well what has been changed within policy. And we're committed to doing that. We will share policy changes with our mayor and our council and our city leaders and, and others as they're made. The policies of the Austin Police Department are public. They are online. They can be found there. But what often goes unnoticed sometimes is when we make changes. And we do see the importance of this community understanding when we make changes to policies. So this is a partnership right now in its infancy. It is encouraging that it is homegrown and that it was born out of peaceful protests and people that were out there for the exact right reasons. And we are a department that's willing to work with those that are working towards positive solutions, change in policing, things that need to happen and want to do it in the appropriate way. So we were very pleased when Just America approached us and asked us to have a conversation. And when they asked us to be here today with them to talk about the importance of this to our community in this moment, we obviously wanted to join them. So that's why we're here today. And that's where we're at right now with the work that we've done. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Chief Manley. I, I think what's happening here is something that needs to happen across the globe. Our communities, specifically our communities of color, have to come together with one another in order to affect positive policy change, positive addendums to orders. And in doing so, I believe that this is the change that America is asking for, that America would like to see. And so to speak a little bit more about uh, what our future plans are, how to get involved, um, and basically what we see out there on the ground, I'm going to have Ahmed Torre come up and give that um, speech. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ahmed Toure, Vice President of Action of Just America. We have been out every single night applying pressure to these systems in order to affect change immediately. We are not going to placate or we are not going to be passive about this. We are going to take action, peaceful action, but action nonetheless. If people continue to ignore, we will continue to apply pressure in peaceful ways. Make it very uncomfortable, but peaceful. We will affect change this way. We can't do it just by talking anymore. We have to take action. And we will take action. Thank you. So I think what we'll do now is we'll open up the floor uh, for five minutes uh, for any questions that any of you may have. Um, we ask that they stay on topic uh, with what was discussed today. Um, and so we'll open up the floor for questions now. So that's not something that we necessarily wanted to address today. Um, I do believe that uh, in the future, maybe that's something that we'll have conversations about. I won't say specifically defunding, uh, but how to make sure that monies are getting back out to the community effectively. Next question.
I believe I've commented to that already that we would remain committed to working with any community organization that is trying to affect positive change and to try and do it in a positive way. As a police department, we have a history of doing that before, and when approached by this new grassroots organization that is out there trying to do the right thing, we will absolutely collaborate with them and work together. Uh, and I imagine there'll be times when we will disagree over what change should be. That's the nature of things, right? But it's, if you don't have those hard conversations and you don't start talking about that, then we don't make improvements anywhere. Chief, so are you agreeing to this group's um, request? They, have, they listed a few, or are instead conversations? Are all these things actually happening? The three specific items that we discussed in regards to the body-worn cameras and the making sure that we notify mayor and council uh, immediately upon making changes to policy and the uh, restrictions on chokeholds, we, we agree with all of those. So as far as what led to the changes in the policy, some of these things, again, we were putting policy, things that were already our practice and our training, they just were not codified in policy. I think the immediate notification to mayor and council is something that they are interested in as well. And so I think that that is appropriate right now. So these were not driven by any one factor, uh, but they just came about right now as far as conversations uh, both with Just America, but conversations we've been having over the past many weeks as well. So it will be, it, it is uh, starting like right now, or within the next 24 hours, will it be implemented? So chokeholds have been banned in the Austin Police Department for decades, as I said. So that's just, we just need to write that into policy. So that'll just be a process of getting that in there. And the body-worn cameras, it'll just be updating the language and the policy again. It is consistent with how we have been handling things, so it's not going to be a, a major uh, effort to update that. And then what we'll do is we'll coordinate with mayor and council to see how they would like us to share with them uh, this information that's public. I would, I, would, I would expect that they'll have us just send it to their offices. Um, so right now, as far as I'm aware, um, in the conversations I've had with various officers, including the assistant chief of police, there's no incentive, whether positive or negative, uh, for officers to hold each other accountable in times where there's ethical violations. Um, you know, there's no encouragement to do it, and then there's no punishment. And if, if an officer doesn't report, um, you know, this bad behavior on behalf of officers, is there any conversation about the way that we're going to increase accountability and the way that we're going to hopefully increase the amount of officers reporting each other for things that may be violations of ethical codes? So the Austin Police Department does have a policy that requires officers to report misconduct by other officers that has been in our policy for quite some time. And what we also see happen frequently is through the reviews that supervisors do of their officers' work, whether it be reviewing their body-worn camera videos, their in-car camera videos through random audits, then we also at times uncover things that may not have been in alignment with policy. So we do have systems in place that address or give opportunity to find those, and we also have a policy that requires it. What's the repercussions for somebody that doesn't follow that requirement? That would depend on the specifics of the uh, incident and what was found during the investigation. Were there any measures that were kind of left on the cutting room floor the table for a further discussion that aren't going to be implemented right now? At the time where we're at right now, no, there's not anything that was brought up that we didn't necessarily agree to in this moment, but I do believe that this uh, is hopefully a partnership that will continue um, given the, the manner in which it formed, again, through peaceful protests and people that want to affect change. Question for Eric. Uh, Last have, question. Have you guys uh, approached other police departments, sheriff's office uh, in the region? I know Austin, obviously. Sure. Well, but obviously, you know, everything that's going on with the uh, Javier Amber case and what's the county sheriff's office, have you approached them or any other um, local <coughs> departments? So I will say this. The reason why we're not just Austin or we're just Texas is because we do plan to, and I, I don't want to make us the, hey, we're the guys who go to the police. No, we're the guys who represent the community, not only in legislation, uh, but in policing, um, in housing, uh, in, in you know, health, healthcare, um, all of those factors. 
um, I think are, are important for us to address at the same moment um, because America, and, and to be honest, black America has played this game for too long uh, to where we want to hit every single uh, issue separately. Um, and I think it's about time that we start addressing all of these issues at the same time. Um, and so with this partnership with APD and, uh, you know, this is really the groundwork, as Chief Manley was saying, uh, this is grassroots. And so this conversation will lead to more conversations as we hear more what the public has to say. But I think what's, what's, what's also important to remember is that um, th these may seem small changes, but at the same time, um, they're, they're very big changes, uh, very big initiatives, and it shows that also the police department is willing to step forward and actually make the change um, that some have said that they're not willing to. Um, so that's the last question. Uh, we'll allow 30 seconds for photos, uh, and then we'll head up from there. Thank you. Will Dupree here in the KXAN live studio. We've just concluded a news conference between Austin Police Chief Brian Manley and some of his top advisors along with a new organization called Just America, and that is an acronym for Justice Unity Sanctuary Trust. This group apparently has sprung up in response to the protests that have broken out here in our city and across the country. These particular uh, men who started this new group met with Chief Manley after talking to another one of his officers and then they discussed about setting certain rules into policy for um, the police. One is that Chief Manley said that for years Austin police have banned the use of any kind of neck restraint, so like a chokehold, but it was never put into official policy. That is now changed based on what has been announced today. So the new rule will say uh, a law enforcement officer and staff may not utilize restraint or holds around the neck of any kind by either person, object, or device in the course of dealing with suspects, detainees, or inmates. Such action will result in immediate referral to the department's disciplinary process. That's the first rule change. Secondly, they're talking specifically about the use of body camera um, with Austin police. And so if now the rule is that if anyone intentionally turns off a body cam while responding to an incident of any kind, then they will face indefinite suspension. That is officially a new rule with the Austin Police Department. And finally, the police are saying they will inform the Austin City Council and the public of any kinds of rule changes and they will make that public knowledge, um, which I suppose was not available or codified at this time, so they're going to be doing that next. So these are three actions that have been taken, ta taken place. Uh, what the chief was saying is that he met with these uh, men from the Just America organization behind the scenes to discuss some of these policy changes. And for those of you, um, I'm looking at some of the comments on Facebook Live, if you're watching us, some of you are asking what Just America is. It is a new organization that has just formed within the last few weeks here in Austin. And JUST is an acronym for Justice Unity Sanctuary Trust. And they kind of laid out some of the vision and work that they plan to do now since they are officially formed here in our community. We will have a full write-up about this on our website, kxan.com, and on uh, our news app. We also are tracking a vote uh, with Austin City Council. They're voting on a number of resolutions to pursue reforms within the police department. So we, of course, will follow that. Thank you all again for watching. Um, we will keep on reporting on this, and we will have, hope you have. We hope to have you join us at another time. Thanks again, everybody.